Hey guys, what is going on? And um, welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is the fourth episode of this series, and today we've got a really interesting and big episode with Palermo and also the Italian national team. Because as we start today's episode off, you will see that we are going to take the international management offer from the catalogue uh, and then enter our career mode with Palermo because this will give us the Italy job. Now, on the first episode of the series, I asked you guys to vote in the YouTube part. I said, when should we take the Italy job? And you guys said straight away so I thought I'd wait until we're out the transfer window we are now so yeah we're gonna take the Italy job straight away thanks to everyone for voting and uh, yeah quicker than ever before we are now manager of the national team awesome although it's not come through yet oh is that it is that it there is that it there there we go okay so we have a heart and mouth moment there for it might not go through so okay then I guess you could say what's happened is that the Italian FA have seen what we're doing with Palermo we're only focusing on Italian players we're bringing in young talents as well and they're thinking if we make this guy head coach then we'll make sure that the future of Italian football is in good hands. So again, thank you to everyone for voting in the YouTube poll. I really appreciate it. We will take the Italian job straight away then. And our objectives are to reach the semi-final of Russia 2018, which will of course come at the end of this season, and also reach the final of the European Championships in 2020. So the Italy job is now ours. Delighted with that. Let's assess the squad today before we start the episode off as well and see what we're working with. And actually, I'm just I'm just realising that uh, we've we've got we've got our first couple of games um, right now <laughs> uh, today. I didn't I didn't realise we're actually on an international break. I I I should have known this. I should have known this due to the gap. I guess when you're in a, a lower tier, you often forget sometimes. But we've got our final uh, two group games. But I just looked at the group table, and as you can see, we've already guaranteed a place at. Russia 2020 so I might just simulate those games actually because obviously they don't they don't really mean much because we've already qualified and yes we could affect the teams below us but we're not really fussed about that so okay great stuff Italy with seven wins from their first eight games now the head coach has been replaced by me and this is the Italian team and as you can see it's a very very decent one uh, it's going to be a while before any Palermo side any Palermo players make it into the side but but, 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 I look at this lineup, I look at this team, and whilst there are a few very decent young players, and there obviously Rugani, uh, Donnarumma, of course, as we know, the goalkeeper uh, for Milan. You've got Domenico Berardi there as well, Mattia Perina, very good goalkeeper as well. Uh, there's some decent young talent, Marco Verratti, Lorenzo Insigne, Immobile, uh, uh, Bernadeschi too. But there's quite a few uh, experienced players here as well. Quite a few experienced players who, in time, will need to be shifted on to make way for some more young talent as well. So it's a good team, this Italian one, but it's going to change a lot under my management throughout the course of the series. And that's one of the best parts about Club and Country as well. If you've never watched a CNC before, and this is the first one, then the team we manage changes so much throughout the course of the series as the younger players develop and get better. But also the country does the exact same. We transition the club and the nation as well. And it's such a fun project. So I'm excited for this team. You know, it's a decent one. But again, lots and lots and lots of more young talent will be introduced for the team as the years go by. I'm excited for this project. And I think we're going to skip past the Poland game, which is quite interesting. We have. We have. And uh, there's a bit here for uh, for Rykovic as well, directly after that from Bologna. you want to take him for £6 million. Pounds. We're outside the transfer window now, but we can still sell players due to EA uh, enabling us to do that from this year onwards. So, yep, totally fine with that deal. And hopefully he'll go in January. And uh, we must have won that game. And uh, we now go into the final World Cup qualifier, which is away against the Czech Republic. But again, as we're already qualified and group winners as well, there's no point in playing it. So we'll simulate this game then. And that does mean that our first games with the country will come uh, at the end of the season in Russia 2018 as well. Now that we've, uh, I'm going to say we've led them to Russia 2018, when of course we haven't. And uh, this game finishes a draw as well. So 2-2 two, two the final score in that one. But again, it doesn't really matter. We qualified for the World Cup. And uh, I wonder if I get credits for that. I do as well. That's brilliant. I I get, I get 25 credits for that. I mean, I don't think I deserved them. I didn't do much, but cheers, lads. Appreciate it. Oh, and there's some bad news, unfortunately. Uh, Rykovic's transfer talks have broken down. But there is a bit here for Kokev or Chochev as well. So that's good. Getting some bits here for our foreign players. I'm aiming to sell them all, the remaining four players in January as well. Of course, we can't use them in a team, so I may as well sell them for whatever cash we can get. But such a shame that one broke down. Six million pounds, that would have been a lovely little fee to get. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just realising as well, we've, we've missed a game. We've missed a game. Uh, the, the first home game of the series, we we just skipped past it. It was a 1-1 draw against Carpi, and uh, we skipped past it, presumably because we were on international duty. But that day, that game came a day after the Poland one. So could I have not nipped back and, and, and nipped over to Sicily to, to manage? Because that Poland game was at home. So couldn't I, couldn't I just quickly nipped over? What? Oh, 
Well, okay, so that game got simulated then. That's annoying. I wanted to play it because that was our first home game with a club as well. Well, quite a, what a weird way to start today's episode then. But, uh, okay, so I'm planning to play four games today anyway. That was supposed to be the first one, but four games today. We've got Lespezia away. We've got Cremona at home. That'll be our first game. And we've got Turney away. And the final game will be against Vichelli at home as well. What a bizarre start to the episode. I was going to say, something didn't add up going into this first game. Because I knew we had a home game. I, uh, I didn't realise we were an international break. I should have waited before I, uh, I took the job. Sorry about that, everyone. But um, there you go. But uh, still, first game today, it's uh, Spezia Calcio away in La Spezia. And I praised our last opponents, Chiavari, for their location. I'm going to do the same thing again here. If I have any Italians that watch me, you can let me know whether I'm being too kind to these places. But La Spezia looks like a lovely city in, uh, in northern Italy. And I'm excited for this game. So, 4 1 2 1 2 narrow once again with a quad in midfield and Keenan Cutroni up top. And hopefully, we'll get back to back wins and our play games here with Palermo. They get two from two on the road as well. And have a good start to the season. Lost Quite the interesting ball. that EA don't have the licenses for uh, for these teams and the badges and the kits as well. As uh, Spezia Calcio are through here already. And that should be 1 0. Gilardino was all alone there and thankfully put it way wide at the post. Faso to Maggiore, nice free ball to Rispoli, who I saw scored the goal in that simulated game and could have made it 2-2 two two there, but Di Gennaro turns behind for a corner. A very lively start to this game, just seven minutes in. Can we take the lead here? No corner headed away, still 0-0. Definitely goals in this game, no doubt about it. Oh, Cutrone kept the ball in there for us after the Spezia kept the ball in for us as well. Cutrone still on the ball, still on the ball. Can he finish for a tight angle? No, it's it's going to go behind for a, a throw in, I think. Or is it going to keep, be kept in play? It is. Oh, oh wow, who was that saving the ball? That was brilliant. That was a shot from Cutrone there, but instead it turned into a pass. We retain possession and now finding an opening through Rispoli inside the area. Can he get a shot away? Yes, he can. Good save by the goalkeeper. I want to know who that was to get the ball in play there. That was brilliant. Carved down an extra chance for us. Tola to Maggiore, waiting for the overlapping run of Rispoli down the right-hand side. Tries to take around Lopez well. and storming into the area. Can he cross? Yes, he can. Not a bad delivery. Headed away. Barela should get there first. Back to Rispoli. Through the gap to Maggiore. Excellent chance here. Rolls it inside. And there's the first goal. Barela with the finish. We spent a lot of money on him. We need to see that be turned into a good deal for us. And it is 1-0 to Palermo as he gets his first goal for the club. And I totally messed up my commentary there. Nice ball inside. And a really encouraging run from Barela as well. As he storms clear. Finds space and smashes it home. 8.3 mil was the fee. Plus Eddie Gnohore. His first goal for the club. And a nice one too. Well done. Just not throw away what will be a big three points even so early on the season. Oh, Bonnie Fazzi. Well done, son. That was brilliant shoulder strength there. Excellent stuff as he goes down the right-hand side and holds off his man as well. That's a brilliant run by our sense back and a good ball too to find Lefasso through the gap towards Keane for his first goal for the club. But where is Bonnie Fazzi? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? There he is. That was absolutely fantastic. That's not Bonnie Fazzi, is it? That's Rolando. I miss Bonnie Fazzi, but that was a brilliant Brilliant run from our centre back. Nice ball inside. Lofaso picks out Keane, free in the area for his first goal for the club. 2 0 Palermo, points in the back. What brilliant strength from our new centre half. That was brilliant. Well, I have been neglecting the gym ever since the new FIFA came out. I won't try and deny it, but Bonnie Fazzi clearly hasn't. His shoulder days never get skipped as Monticello makes it free. It's free for Palermo. He's called the bench to score once again. It's two goals in three games for this guy, and I really like him off the bench in an impact sub. 3 0 Palermo. Points in the bag. What a win. I'm pretty sure the Italian FA will be watching this game and thinking, I think we've made the right call. I think we've made the right call to give this young manager the job because there's a lot of young players to play for Palermo that are going to feature in that national team as the years go on as well. 3-0 the final score, our best win of the season so far. That was a brilliant display. No doubt about it, it definitely deserved the win. Uh, Spezia Calcio started off okay, but once we got that first goal, we really were in control. In the second half, we bossed really and deserved the three points. The man of the match does go to Bereda for scoring his first goal for the club and playing quite well for the middle of the park. But honourable mention does go to Bonnie Fazzi. Uh, for brilliant defensive work and also of course getting involved in the second goals build up as well thought it was great today just a great win for Palermo though 3-0 the final score and a great start to the season I'm loving this team already and also just for the next game a uh, quick email here Chochev is going to leave in January to go tell us Verona 4.8 million pounds delighted with that 3.5 mil goes into our budget as soon as the transfer window opens that's really awesome news and that means now that come January they'll just be guaranteed as things stand anyway uh, three foreign players left in the club Coronado Silva and also Rykovic as well and hopefully we'll sell them all in 
in January too and make this team fully Italian. So second game today and it's US Cremonis uh, as they come and take us on here in our first play game on the island of Sicily. And I looked them up. They're a newly promoted side to Serie B, so we should really fancy our chances going into this game. And after an undefeated start, we've won every game so far in the league we've played. We're top of the table with seven points in three games. Let's get another three points here. Same lineup, same formation, hopefully same result. Come on, Palermo. So I'm just realizing as well, I forgot to change the commentary language to Italian again. Sorry about that. I just, I, I keep forgetting. I wish there was a way to change the settings. So like when you go into the save, you have like settings for that one save there, as opposed to the entire game. It'll make things so much easier. And I'm so forgetful. I'll always keep on forgetting it as Cremonis uh, came through for the first chance there. And Pimoni had to make the save and turn it behind for a corner. Not starting this game off very well. Still 0-0, 10 minutes in, but the away side looking threatening to begin with. I just want to win our first game here at the Stadio Renzo Barbara, but instead they're through again here, and once again Pomini has to provide the heroics to keep it at 0 0. We've made a terrible start, and Cremonese look really, really strong and encouraging as that shot is once again saved. We're all over the place. That was a terrible first half from Palermo. We scored three in our last game, but didn't even get close to getting a chance at a goal in the first half. We did absolutely nothing. Attack. So let's change that in the second half if we can and get some opportunities. As Keane could be through, out. terrible pass. Keane, oh yes, Moisa Keane scores his second in two. And what a strike, a mistake from one of the Cremonese players. But he gave it straight to Keane, who took a touch and then just levered it with so much aggression into the back of the net. A powerful strike. If the goalkeeper got a touch on that, that was going to break his hand. No doubt about it. What a thumping effort from Keane. 1-0 Palermo. Brilliant strike. And we go in front against the run of play. You know, he missed a couple of golden chances like in the, the last episode attack. to score his first goal for the club. But today, making no mistakes whatsoever. Here's Paulino on the ball. Looking for space. Shooting. And they're right back on level terms. And to be fair, they deserve it. No doubt about it. Really good strike by Paulino. He's caused me problems all game long so far. And he's finally got the goal that Cremonese deserve. And that will do it then. 1-1 the final score at the Stadio Renzo Barbara. Wanted a win in our first play game at home on the island of Sicily. But I've got to be honest here, the away side turned up and were absolutely fantastic. 1-1 the final score and they deserve to win. We're lucky to get a point. Backed up by the stats as well. Uh, they had more of the ball, had more shots. Same amount on target, but they were the better team in my opinion. And we were lucky. Very lucky to get a point in our first play game here at the Stadio Renzo Barbara. Paulinho definitely man the match though. Scored their only goal of the game. 100% passing. He was a handful throughout for us in this game. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that we escaped with a point because we could have lost that game and probably should have done too. And some good news after the game. Our scout has returned for his next month's worth of players. So let's go ahead and see who he's got for us this time. Uh, the goalkeeper here, not the best. We're going to go ahead and release him. Or reject him, I should say. Stefano Rossi, though, could be all right. Uh, should we put him in the academy? We'll give it another month. Uh, Guidi can go, though, that's for sure. Uh, Gallo could be pretty decent. Rossi can go. Uh, oh, Alessandro Gallo looks... Oh, that's the same name. That's the same name there. But this is Al uh, Alessandro Gallo. Looks very decent indeed. We'll put him straight in our academy. And oh, Fabio Rossi as well. Could be very decent too. Very decent players there. Put them both in the academy. And we'll continue the scouting on those guys. And actually, let's see as well how good those youth players are to begin with. Uh, Fabio Rossi. 15 years old, can't promote him yet, but 59 overall with 74 94 potential. Uh, potential. And oh, Alessandro Gallo is 16 and 61 overall as well, and some good potential too. Uh, these two guys still 15 years old. We're going to promote Alessandro Gallo today straight away. Uh, 61 overall. He's, he's got some very decent stats coming out of the academy. Let's see what his potential is like. Our first youth player of the club and country series. What's he like? So Alessandro Gallo accepting the contract. Let's take a look at him in the squad hub. Praying for really good potential. Let's find out how good he is. He's a right winger and he's an exciting prospect. I'll take that every day of the week. Alessandro Gallo is in. What are his skill moves in weak foot? Three star, three star. We can certainly live with that. The right winger at the academy, our first youth player of the series, and some already very decent stats. Crossing 64, dribbling 61, free kick 62, curve 77 already. Really like that. Alessandro Gallo, first youth player, and he looks very, very good indeed. An exciting prospect, one might say.
And the young 16-year-old will make his debut in this game as well. Not on the wings, but in the attacking midfield role. Uh, we stick with the same formation for this game, a 4-1-2-1-2 narrow. I really like it. Uh, but a few changes in personnel due to this game coming just a few days before our next one and a few days after our last one. Uh, so Gallo in the attacking midfield role as you're away in tourney for this game. And I'm excited to see how he'll get on as well. Even though primarily this is a winger, I think with his stats, he could play through the middle. And I want to see him bag a goal or an assist on his debut, lay things down straight away, show us what he can do as part of this young up-and-coming Palermo team. Most importantly though, let's get the three points. Obviously with a lack of squad depth, not too many players of high stamina and 42 games in the Serie B season. This is going to be a real problem for us this year. Our main concern is not going to be the ability of our players because we're expected to win the league title. We have the squad to do that. But again, the lack of squad depth is going to be our main concern going into this season as Coutrone is on the ball down the right hand side. And our first chance could fall early. And our first goal should have fell early as well there as Patrick drags it wide of the post. Still nil-nil. But again, squad depth the main concern this season. When we go into a month where there's lots of fixtures in a row, it's, it's going to be tough to rotate the side, keep everyone fresh and keep all Italian, which is mandatory as well. This is going to be a really tough challenge for us this year. Only with a chance to go in front with their first chance of the game. It's rolled inside and the shot fizzed just over the bar. We've been very poor in this one. We look so tired and, 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 and we alluded to it earlier. You know, this is going to be a big problem for us this season. Not having the squad depth, not having the stamina means that inevitably when games like this come round, so soon after the last one, we're not fit enough to play and play our best football. A real issue for us. I would not be surprised if Turney do go ahead and win this game later on as they could be through again here. And another shot on our goal and this one does go in. I'm not one bit surprised. Turney take the lead 65 minutes in. Their first shot on target results in a goal but we're just really tired out there absolutely exhausted and our goalkeeper started off quite well but I thought he should have saved that shot really it seemed to loop over him and go into the back of the net maybe it's a decent effort but I think really the goalkeeper should have stopped that one he doesn't know and Tony do have the lead but again I'm not one bit surprised out there and you know we might be one of the stronger teams in the division you know the ball might expect us to win the title but with a really really thin squad and not much stamina this is where we're going to come unstuck this season. This is where we're going to come unstuck. You know, not having a big squad and trying to deal with quick games in quick succession. It's going to be tough. It's going to be very, very tough. Oh, is there still time for a late equalising goal? Monticello on the ball. Takes it around his man. Might need some help here. Still Monticello. It'll drop to Keane. This is our final chance here. Down the left-hand side. It's Keane. It's Keane. I'll try and work it in cycles. Crosses have not worked today. It'll drop to Del Monte. It's Del Monte. He'll need some help, surely. Del Monte. Monticello, Monticello, Monticello saved by the goalkeeper and that will do it. Our first defeat of the series comes away in Turney, but I'm not one bit surprised. This will be a tough season for us this year when fixtures come in quick succession because you can see the players, they're flat out. Lose the game, out of energy, out of stamina and no points picked up. Disappointing defeat, but it was on the cards. I felt we deserved a point. You know, we played quite well, created some good chances, but again, we, we lack the energy really to, to get us over the line and get us at least a point. So Turney get the win. They inflict our first defeat on us in the series so far. And I think I'll give Man Match the goalkeeper as well. Some really big saves in this game, particularly down the stretch as well. So Turney, the first team to beat us in the series. But I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. We were just exhausted. However, some good news after the game because Atalanta are putting a bid here for Rykovic and hopefully this time he will accept this contract and leave the club. 6.3 mil, that'll be a big necessary cash injection for January that we really, really need to strengthen this team and bring in more bodies. Because after that last defeat, you can tell we clearly need them. Our squad's too thin. All right, so fourth and final game today, it's FC Pro Vichelli who come and take us on here at the Stadio Renzo Barbara. And this game's just coming a few days after our last one, which was the defeat to Turney. Not all the boys are fully fit for the game but there's a week's gap between the next game so I'm going to still play our normal first 11 4 one 2 one 2 narrow and hopefully we'll get back to winning ways since the first game in the episode and pick up our first win here on the island of Sicily let's get it done I want to win the final game I want to get that first win here in Sicily to end the episode a real positive ending if we can but a good chance here for the away side to go in front what a cross on the back stick and what a header and it's 1-0 to the visitors, and we may be set for back-to-back -back defeats. It was a brilliant cross to the back stick. A nice little celebration by Altabelli as well. And FC Pro Vichelli are in front.
I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Next training session we have, I'm going to train the stamina for five players for every single session we have. Because this, this is going to be a big, big concern for us this year. Not having a fit enough squad to deal with these games. Here's Lofaso on the ball, rolling it inside. Maggiore, back to Lofaso. Nice build up, shoots and oh, what a goal. Oh, Keane's claiming it. Keane's, what? That was Lofaso. Keane... What did I? I swear, Lofaso struck that, didn't he? Why is Keane celebrating? Moisa Keane is celebrating, and uh, we got back on level terms. It was like, yo, it was Lofaso that struck it. But Keane, what? How is Keane claiming that? That that must have taken the slightest deflection, maybe off his short, and 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 gone in. He didn't even touch it with his leg. It must have been the short. How is Moisa Keane claiming that? Poor Lofaso. That goal should be his. That's a still time. We need a goal. I do not want to have just two wins from our first six in the league and no wins at home. So Tola to Moisa. He's got one. Can he get another? Keane. Keane. Oh, great work. Great work by Keane. And a shot saved by the goalkeeper. He did everything right. But a shot straight at the goalkeeper. And I think that's going to do it as well. Four minutes to go. Uh, six minutes to go. But I think that's going to do it. This is nowhere near good enough for a team supposed to win the league come the end of the season. Gallo on the ball. Steps inside. Might need some help. So goes back out wide to Satola. Free ball to Keane who has looked good in this game. It's Moisa. It's Moisa. Please. Please. Moisa Keane. Saved. Oh, God. Dal Monte. You had an open goal with 15 seconds on the clock. How would you put it over from there? This has been a really tough start for Palermo. Honestly, man, this is this is not a good enough start. This is not a good enough start. Two wins from our first six. No wins at home. It's not good enough. We're supposed to win the league title, but we might have a decent side out there, but there's not enough bodies in this team. The fans aren't happy, and neither am I. January could not come quicker as far as I'm concerned. We need more bodies, more players, and more squad depth, because that's the real issue here. Our players are just too tired. You know, after the start of today's episode, I was thinking 3-0, brilliant win on the road, an excellent start to the season, but since then, no wins in our last three, just two points picked up from a possible nine, and still no wins here at the Stadio Arena. Enzo Barbara. I've got to say, this is going to be a really tough challenge this year. Really tough challenge. I'll give my match to Keane for the goal he scored and played well too, but sadly couldn't take another one to, to give us the, uh, the the winning goal. And to be fair, he shouldn't have even claimed the goal because it was definitely low fast But either way, this this is going to be a really tough challenge this year. You know, do not expect us to walk this league because we won't. We won't. There's no doubt about it. Very, very tough beginning. Two wins in our first six and no wins here in Sicily. It, it's been a poor start and we need to train the stamina of our players as well because we're just not fit enough and we can't cope with too many games in quick succession. So that will end today's episode of Club and Country, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy the episode, then please do drop a like as likes are, of course, very much appreciated and it really helped channel out as well. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic evening and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon where hopefully we'll get our first win at home and also start playing a little bit better as well. Thanks for watching. Much love to you all and I'll see you for the next episode very soon. Bye.